I'm going to close this book. I'm going to show you how to do it on a calculator. So hopefully you have those written down. If not, we'll do it in like... Yeah, write all those down and add them up. You should get 0.999. Okay. Now, calculator people. There you go. Your scientific calculator will not do this, but this fantastic graphic calculator will. What you're going to do is turn on the calculator. We are dealing with the binomial, what's it called? Probability formula. And it's based on the probability distribution. We're under a distribution, so look real careful. You should have a distribution button. It's the distur. We're going to go to the distur. Go to the distributions right above the variables button. Right there. It pulls that up on the screen. Now, eventually, we will actually be dealing with all of this stuff right here. Maybe even this stuff. But scroll down a little bit, would you? Scroll down a little bit, and you're going to see that numbers 9, I'm oh, sorry, 10 and 8, those say binomial PDF and binomial CDF. Don't go into the poison. You know, we don't want poison. That's no, poison, actually. But uh, don't go to that one. You'll get sick. <laughs> We're just going to go here. You go to poison, you got too far. Uh, go to binomial PDF and binomial CDF. This is a point probability. This is a cumulative probability. Here's how this works. Watch carefully. If you want to find out an exact value, an exact number of successes, that's considered a point probability. That's going to be your PDF. This is what's so cool about your calculator. If you want to find out up to and including something, that's cumulative. So if I want to find at most something that's up to and including 8. You with me on that? If I wanted to find less than, I'd go up to but not including. So I'd punch, punch in not 8 here, but 7, one less than that. Does that make sense to you? So you got to be smarter than your calculator is. you got to punch in the right numbers. But it will do the math for you. Here's how. What you're going to do, let's try the exactly 8 first. Exactly 8. You're going to punch in the number of trials you have first. So right now, the number of trials is how many? Then put a comma. Then put in the probability of success for those trials. In our case, it's 0 0.30. Commas above the, the, uh, the 7. Then you put 0 0.30. That's a probability of success. And then you put how many successes you want. So comma, that's right here. I want how many successes? Eight. You don't have to even put the, uh, the end parentheses. Just press enter. Point zero zero one four four six seven. That's exactly what we just calculated with all that work in the formulas. Now, if you want to find up to and including, okay, up to and including, I have to do this kind of quickly. We're running out of time. But I'm going to go. You can watch this on the video again. Go to distribution again. Go down to binomial. CDF, press enter. What this will do, you have the same information, but what this will do, it will add up all the probabilities up to a certain number for you, and including that number. So you have to be good at knowing whether you're supposed to include that number or not, because if you put it, it's going to include it. If you want less than something, you go one less than that number. So we'd go 10 trials, probability of success is still 0 0.30. We want, here's what you're saying here, folks. You're saying I want up to and including eight successes. 0.99985. That just added everything up to you and it's more accurate than your table. How many people understood that? Okay, watch that video again. If you didn't quite catch how to do that on a calculator, this is very, very useful for you. So let's go ahead and do one more example and here's the game I've invented. Here's how this game works. I hand you the deck of cards and it's either a win or lose game. Here's how it happens. I hand you the deck. I say pick a card. You pick out a card. You write down what it is. You give me the card back. I reshuffle it. Have you draw the card again. That's why I said that with replacement, we're going to do this seven times. And so you're going to have on your piece of paper written down seven cards after you, you've drawn them. Does that make sense to you? So you're going to pick one, write it down, put it back. Shuffle it all up. You pick another one, write it down, put it back. If you happen to get five hearts, Five hearts, not five in a row, just five out of the seven. If you have to get five hearts, at least, you win the game. Sound like a good game? We're going to find out the probability of doing this. And we're going to do some other probabilities that are kind of along with this, just so that 
You know, I just saw the top of your hair just right there. So. Um, can't really edit that out either. Just gonna see this across the screen. It's gonna be kind of funny. Uh, anyway, so I lost my train of thought. We're going to draw seven cards out. You're going to write them down, and this is with replacement. So the odds of drawing out a heart don't change at any time. I just have you okay on this so far. Okay. If you get at least five hearts, it doesn't have to be five in a row, it doesn't be the last five or the first five cards, just five hearts out of those seven cards, you're going to win the game. If you don't get at least five hearts, you're going to lose the game. Does everyone understand this? Okay. We need to be very good at the vocabulary here, too, so we're going to identify what's a success, what's a failure, what is our N, our P, our Q, our X, the probability of X. We're going to identify all those things right now. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. I'm going to add on a couple other things here uh, after our, our identification, because we're not just going to do this one game. We're going to do a couple other games with this, all right? So we can kind of get an idea about the at most, at least, and so on. So first thing... Before you even start the problem, your homework's not going to ask you for this typically, but I'm going to ask you for this. I want you to identify what a success is for this and what a failure is. You need to be good at that, identifying what a success is. So, true or false? Here's a true or false question for you. True or false? A success is getting at least five hearts. Is that a success? A success is getting at least five hearts. What do you think? Is that a success or is that something else? A success must be on a trial by trial basis. So if I say draw one card and then you tell me whether you got a success or not, that's what a success means. Success doesn't mean you do the whole thing and then if you got it, you're successful. And if you didn't, you're not. That's our English version of success, right? You would say, oh, I, I, it's a success if I win. That's, that would be our version of a success. In binomial probability, it's a trial by trial basis. Because you have to be able to identify your probability on a trial by trial basis. Now you have to be okay with that. You can't find this probability right off the bat. We're going to have to work towards that. To start out, you need to identify what success is on a trial by trial basis. That way you can identify what your probability is on a trial by trial basis. So when I say, what's a success, you're not going to tell me a success is getting at least five hearts. What is your success? Remember, it has to be, I draw a card, and either that's a success or that's not a success. It's one or the other. So what is a success here? A heart. A heart. Yeah. A success would be the guard, the guard, you go. Heart, successful, yay! Or club, diamond, spade, not successful. Right? That's what our success is in this case. So a success is drawing a heart, singular. It's on, a, on one trial. Say drawing a heart. Okay, that is a success. What is a failure then? Yeah, not drawing a heart. Or what are the other three suits? So you can say this two ways. A failure would be not drawing a heart. That would be the easiest way to say it. Or you could say drawing a club, diamond, spade. Either way is fine because those, those are complementary. So failure, instead of drawing a heart, would be not drawing a heart. Ironically, I just drew a heart. <laughs> How many people understand the idea of a success versus a failure, and you understand this is during one trial that you identify your success? Are you okay with that? All right. Now that we've identified a success and a failure, we can go ahead and figure out all this other stuff. Namely, I want to know what N is. I want to know what, don't say it out loud right now, what P is. I want to know what Q is. And then we'll talk about X in a little while. We'll, we'll give some other cases, okay? Well, for now, we can talk about X. We'll do some of the problems over here on this side of the board. First thing, N. What does the letter N stand for? Great. How many trials do we have? That's how many times we're drawing cards. Every one of those trials can be either a success or a failure. That's the whole idea here. So we have... Seven trials, because we're drawing this card seven times, we're putting it back in the deck and reshuffling to do it again. 
I had to do it that way. Did you understand why I had to change the first problem from, from we're drawing seven cards to we're drawing one at a time and putting it back? So otherwise, if you kept a card out, it would change the probability for every trial, right? And those would not be independent. Uh, they, they wouldn't be mutually exclusive. So we would, we would have to, but we, we, I'm sorry, we wouldn't be able to use our binomial probability to fill the rule for that. P, what does P stand for first of all? The, letter, the little letter P, what's it stand for? Probability of getting a successful outcome in Great. a single trial. Wow, you guys were like stereo <laughs> on that one. That was kind of cool, kind of creepy, but kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, the P is for one outcome. What's a success for one, one outcome? That's our idea here. It's not, not this probability. We're not looking for at least five hearts. We're looking at trial by trial, what's the probability of getting a success? What's our success again? Drawing a heart. So you draw one card, what's the probability that you're going to get a heart is what this is saying. Notice how in order to get this, you have to identify this correctly. You have to. If you get this wrong, you will not be able to find that. If you do, you don't know what success actually means. So a success is on a single trial, whether you get what you're looking for or not, this is the probability of getting that one success. What's the probability of drawing a heart in this situation? Assume we have a standard deck. Say that again. How did you get 0.25? Great, what's 13? Number of hearts. Out of 52, that's the number of cards. So 13 out of 52, 13 hearts, 52 cards. Is this changing every time I draw the card out or not? No. No, because it's with replacement. I'm putting it back every time. So there's always 13 hearts, there's always 52 cards. This is going to be. 0.25, and that's what we're going to be using. Don't use a 13 over 52. That's way too hard. Big fractions, no good. Well, you could use one quarter, I guess, one over four. If our P is 0.25, everybody tell me, what is my Q? Sure, those things have to add to one. So 0.25 and 0.75, those are the complementary probabilities. One's a success, one's a failure. And that should probably make sense. I mean, if drawing a heart gives you 0.25, not drawing a heart, that's everything else. That's the club, the spade, and the diamond. That's going to give you 0.75, the 75% chance of drawing anything else besides a heart. Now, in this case, I'm asking you to find the probability of getting at least five hearts, at least five hearts. So what is our x here? Okay, so x in, in general is the number of successes that you, you want, that you're looking for. The number of successes. So a success is drawing a heart, x would be the number of hearts that you're looking for. Do you see the interplay between those things? Okay, notice how this probability is not the probability of x. Okay, this is going to be based on some other information. Uh, the, the probability of x is going to be based on some other information besides that. So in our case, what would x be? If we're looking for at least five hearts, what would accomplish that? How many x's do we need? Five. It, just five? No. Six. What else would work? Four. Four would work? No. Six. I want at least Seven. five hearts. What's at least five hearts? Five or more. Five or more is the same thing as at least five hearts. Does that make sense to you? Those things are exactly the same. So if I'm looking for at least five hearts, five works. What else works? Six. Six works. Seven. What else works? Seven. Seven works. What else works? Eight. How many cards am I drawing? Oh. Seven. Seven. So is this it? That's it. So what this really comes down to, and this is why we said that this is an or probability, in order to find this probability, I know that the probability of getting five hearts plus the probability of getting six hearts